Mahmud II, Ottoman Turkish, Mahmud Sani the 20th of July 1789, the 1st of July 1839, was the 30th Sultan of the Ottoman Empire from 1808 until his death in 1839. He was born in the Tropkapi Palace, Constantinople. The posthumous son of Sultan Abdul Hamid I. His reign is notable mostly for the extensive administrative, military and fiscal reforms he instituted, which culminated into the decree of Dansimat, reorganization, that was carried out by his sons Abdul Masid I and Abdulaziz I. His mother was valid Sultan Akshay Dilharski, who according to legend was a cousin of Josephine de Panais, wife of Napoleon Bonaparte. In 1808, Mahmud II's predecessor, and half-brother, Mustafa IV ordered his execution along with his cousin, the deposed Sultan Selim III, in order to defuse the rebellion. Selim III was killed, but Muhammad was safely kept hidden by his mother and was placed on the throne after the rebels deposed Mustafa IV. The leader of this rebellion, Alemda Mustafa Pasha, later became Muhammad II's vizier. Western historians give Muhammad a bad reputation for simply being the Sultan during a time of deterioration of the Ottoman Empire. There are many stories surrounding the circumstances of his attempted murder. A version by the 19th century Ottoman historian Sevd Pasha gives the following account. One of his slaves, a Georgian girl named Sevri, gathered ashes when she heard the commotion in the palace surrounding the murder of Selim III. When the assassins approached the harem chambers where Muhammad was staying, she was able to keep them away for a while by throwing ashes into their faces, temporarily blinding them. This allowed Muhammad to escape through a window and climb onto the roof of the harem. He apparently ran to the roof of the third court where other pages saw him and helped him come down with pieces of clothes that were quickly tied together as a ladder. By this time one of the leaders of the rebellion, Alemda Mustafa Pasha arrived with his armed men and upon seeing the dead body of Selim III proclaimed Muhammad as Padishka. The slave girl Sevri Kulfa was awarded for her bravery and loyalty and appointed Hasneda Eusta, the chief treasurer of the imperial harem which was the second most important position in the hierarchy. A plain stone staircase at the Alt Nile, Golden Way, of the harem is called Staircase of Sevri, Jevri, Kulfa, since the events apparently happened around her and are associated with her. The vizier took the initiative in resuming reforms that had been terminated by the conservative coup of 1807 that had brought Mustafa fort to power. However he was killed during a rebellion in 1808 and Muhammad II temporarily abandoned the reforms. Muhammad II's later reformation efforts were more successful. During the early years of Muhammad II's reign, his governor of Egypt Mehmet Ali Paza successfully reconquered the holy cities of Medina, 1812, and Mecca. 1813, from the Nejdi rebels. His reign also marked the first breakaway from the Ottoman Empire, with Greece gaining its independence following a rebellion that started in 1821. In 1827 the combined British, French and Russian navies defeated the Ottoman navy at the Battle of Navarino. In the aftermath, the Ottoman Empire was forced to recognize Greece with the Treaty of Constantinople in July 1832. This event, together with the occupation of the Ottoman province of Algeria by France in 1830, marked the beginning of the gradual breakup of the Ottoman Empire. Non-Turkish ethnic groups living in the empire's territories, especially in Europe, started their own independence movements. Among Muhammad II's most notable acts during his reign was the abolition of the Janissary Corps in 1826, permitting the establishment of a European-style conscript army recruited largely from Turkish speakers of Romelia and Asia Minor. Muhammad was also responsible for the subjugation of the Iraqi Mamluks by Ali Rapasha in 1831. He ordered the execution of the renowned Ali Pasha of Tepelina. He sent his Grand Vizier to execute the Bosniak hero Husn Gradasivik and dissolute the Bosnia Ela. He began preparations for the Tanzimat reforms in 1839. The Tanzimat marked the beginning of modernization in Turkey and had immediate effects on social and legal aspects of life in the empire, such as European-style clothing, architecture, legislation, institutional organization and land reform. He was concerned also for aspects of tradition. He made great efforts to revive the sport of archery. He ordered archery master Mustafa Kani to write a book about the history, construction, 
and use of Turkish bows, from which comes most of what is now known of Turkish bow irie. Muhammad II died of tuberculosis, some say he was murdered, at the Isma Sultana Palace, Samlka, in 1839. His funeral was attended by crowds of people who came to bid the Sultan farewell. His son Abdulmasid succeeded him. Among his reforms are the edicts, or firmans, by which he closed the court of confiscations and took away much of the power of the Pashas. Previous to the first of the firmans the property of all persons banished or condemned to death was forfeited to the crown, and a sordid motive for acts of cruelty was thus kept in perpetual operation, besides the encouragement of a host of vile delators. The second firman removed the ancient rights of Turkish governors to doom men to instant death by their will, the Pashas, the Argas, and other officers were enjoined that they should not presume to inflict, themselves, the punishment of death on any man, whether or Turk, unless authorized by a legal sentence pronounced by the Qadi, and regularly signed by the judge. Muhammad also created an appeal system by a criminal to one of the Kars Asker, chief military judge, of Asia or Europe, and finally to the Sultan himself if the criminal chose to persist in his appeal. About the same time that Muhammad II ordained these changes, he personally set an example of reform by regularly attending the divan, or state council, instead of secluding himself from the labors of state. The practice of the sultan avoiding the divan had been introduced as long ago as the reign of Suleiman I, and was considered as one of the causes of the decline of the empire by a Turkish historian nearly two centuries before Muhammad II's time. Muhammad II also addressed some of the worst abuses connected with the Vakifs, by placing their revenues under state administration. However, he did not venture to apply this vast mass of property to the general purposes of the government. In his time the financial situation of the empire was troubling and certain social classes had long been under oppression under difficult taxes. In dealing with the complicated questions that therefore arose, Muhammad too is considered to have demonstrated the best spirit of the best of the corpulous. A firman of February 22, 1834 abolished the vexatious charges which public functionaries, when traversing the provinces, had long been accustomed to take from the inhabitants. By the same edict all collection of money, except for the two regular half-yearly periods, was denounced as abuses. No one is ignorant, said Sultan Mehmed II in this document, that I am bound to afford support to all my subjects against vexatious proceedings, to endeavor unceasingly to lighten, instead of increasing their burdens, and to ensure peace and tranquility. Therefore, those acts of oppression are at once contrary to the will of God, and to my imperial orders, the horrors or capitation tax, though moderate and exempting those who paid it from military service, had long been made an engine of gross tyranny through the insolence and misconduct of the government collectors. The Firman of 1834 abolished the old mode of levying it, and ordained that it should be raised by a commission composed of the CAD, the Muslim governors, and the Aians, or municipal chiefs of res in each district. Many other financial improvements were effected by another important series of measures. The administrative government was simplified and strengthened, and a large number of sinecure offices were abolished. Sultan Mehmed too provided a valuable personal example of good sense, and economy, organizing the imperial household, suppressing all titles without duties and all salaried officials without functions. Muhammad II dealt effectively with the military fiefs, the Mares and the Zayamites. These had been instituted to furnish the old effective military force, but had long ceased to serve this purpose. By attaching them to the public domains, Muhammad II materially strengthened the resources of the state, and put an end to a host of corruptions. One of the most resolute acts of his ruling was the suppression of the Dubais, the hereditary local chiefs with power to nominate their successors in default of malaise, which, in one of the worst abuses of the Ottoman feudal system, had made themselves petty princes in almost every province of the empire. The reduction of these insubordinate feudatories was not effected at once, or without severe struggles and frequent insurrections. Muhammad too steadily persevered in this great measure and ultimately the island of Cyprus became the only part of empire in which power not emanating from the sultan was allowed to be retained by Dubais. One of his most notable achievement was the abolition, 
through use of military force, execution and exile, and banning of the Bekdasi order, of the Janissary Corps, event known as the Auspicious Incident, in 1826 and the establishment of a modern Ottoman army, named the Asakir Iman Shri Muhammad I, meaning victorious soldiers of Muhammad in Ottoman Turkish. Following the loss of Greece after the Battle of Navarino against the combined British-French-Russian flotilla in 1827, Muhammad II gave top priority to rebuilding a strong Ottoman naval force. The first steamships of the Ottoman Navy were acquired in 1828. In 1829 the world's largest warship for many years, the 201 by 56 gauge M, 1 gauge M equals 37.887 cm, or 76.15 m times 21.22 m. 249.8 feet times 69.6 feet, ship of the line Mahmud II, which had 128 cannons on three decks and carried 1,280 sailors on board, was built for the Ottoman Navy at the Imperial Naval Arsenal, Terse Nyamaya, on the Golden Horn in Constantinople, Gaidem, which translates as foot, is often misinterpreted as equivalent in length to one imperial foot. Hence the wrongly converted dimensions of 201 by 56 feet, or 62 by 17 meters in some sources. The 2006 historical detective novel The Janissary Tree, by Jason Goodwin, is set in 1836 Constantinople, with Muhammad II's modernizing reforms, and conservative opposition to them, forming the background of the plot. The Sultan himself and his mother appear in several scenes. The 1989 film Intimate Power, also known as The Favourite, is adapted from an historical fiction novel by Prince Michael of Greece. It portrays a legend about Amy Dubuque de Rivery as a young captured French girl who, after spending years in an Ottoman harem, outlives two sultans and protects Muhammad as his surrogate mother. Muhammad is a minor role in the film but is portrayed as both an adult and a child. The film concludes with a variation of his dramatic succession 